Hey guys, Pastor Jerry here, the Little Country Church in New Caney and Crosby, Texas. We talked Sunday that God is a zip code God. He's a 77352. He's a 77357. You know, whatever zip code you're in, you'll find out that God is a geographic God. He works within that uh, arena, that perimeter, if you would. He does for certain geographic areas. You see it over and over in the Word of God. I want to talk to you this, this week about joy. Just a little bit. Joy is one of my favorite words. The world didn't give it to me. The world can't take it away. The joy of the Lord is your strength. It comes from the word charis. We get the word grace, joy. They run together in so many different ways. Joy, my friend, is so powerful. It doesn't come from circumstances. According to the Word of God, you can have joy in the most difficult times and places of your life. We think people with joy don't have problems. Everybody has problems. Hey, if you, if, what are you smiling about today? People, the world wants to know. Listen, the joy of the Lord and to keep that joy is so important. People, people, being around people, certain people do bring me joy. Certain people bring me joy when I see them walk away. Okay, yeah, I said that. Let me just tell you, I'm in charge of my life starting today. I once heard a guy say, you know, if uh, I have a good day, it's my fault. That guy was me. I've been saying that for years. If I have a good day, it's my fault, man. So if it's bad, well, then I'm going to throw it on me too. But today I've decided to have a good day because I'm in charge of me. You know, position, status doesn't always bring joy. We find a lot of the great believers of the Word of God in prison. And even in prison, Paul had joy in Acts chapter 16. We read, well, Joseph kept his faith in God through the time of prison. Daniel in the lion's den. We read it over and over. David in the cave. Amen. So it's what you do with, your, with life. How about economy? Oh, man, our economy is starting to shift to go down. One of the things I know, it's what you do with your wealth that determines your joy. It's how you distribute it. We've often said if God can get it through you, he'll get it to you. He just looking, and he doesn't need, he doesn't need a rain. He doesn't need uh, uh, the provision that me and you have. He can pull a coin from a fish, fish from a basket. He can make a little widow's, a uh, little bit of oil and flour go a long, long way as he did for Elijah. So all through scripture, we realize that God doesn't need Sometimes the best he can have is nothing, and he can make the world out of nothing. He spoke, and it was. But let me tell you that joy does come from understanding truth. God is with me always. He'll never leave me nor forsake me. If anyone is against me, God is for me. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5 says, Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God has said, Never will I leave you nor forsake you so that you can say with confidence, The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid of what man can do to me. You know, to have peace with God. And if you follow God's plan every day, the static of this life will start tuning out. You'll hear his voice and be able to follow God wherever he calls you. It speaks to you. I've often said that peace is adjusting one's life to the will of God. It's like a radio that's got a little static. You just adjust it a little bit, and all of a sudden now you're picking it up a little bit clearer. Maybe this week you adjust just a little bit. You'll be able to hear the voice of God just a little bit better. But there are things that can take away your joy. Selfishness can take away your joy. Resentment, bitterness, it will steal joy from you. Uh, fear. We've talked about fear on Sunday. It's, a, it's an anthem throughout the church world now to help people not to panic, if you would. Fear, my friend, is a, is a terrible thing. Fear in the heart of man causes depression. That's the opposite of joy. Proverbs 12, 25 says, An anxious heart weighs a man down, but a kind word cheers him up. All fear is built on the lie. If you destroy the lie, the fear will die. Fear makes us defensive. It makes us distant. And it makes us demanding. So I will tell you, if you're going to bring the joy back into your life, reflect on God's gifts to you. Psalm 103 tells us, but don't forget the benefits of God, the little things. Look at them again, all the blessings that you have in life, your eyesight, your mind, gifts to help your occupation, leadership, abilities, good education. How about a soft bed, amen, a roof over your head? Remind yourself of God's promises regarding generosity. I have found that during this season, I'm giving more. I have more to give. I've not been going out to eat. Probably neither have you. So I've been trying to be more generous in this season. And I found that God works off generosity and sacrifice. That as I begin to release pe uh, blessings from my life to people that need it, I, and I listen to the word of God, I promise you those blessings start coming back to you. And then examine your heart. Do I really believe there is a need? 
Do I believe that God is on my side? And when you do that, you're going to realize that he's for you and not against you. And just glorify God. Glorify God over this next week. Be extremely generous. And watch what happens. You know, the Scripture says God loves a, a cheerful giver. I'm not trying to take up an offering. I'm just giving you some principles. A cheerful giver. Amen. Some folk got cirrhosis of the giver. Amen. It's just firmed up in their life. And they just, they're so constipated that God can't get nothing through them. God's trying to bless you, man. Amen. Be a blessing to others this week. And find that favor and joy comes all over your life. Hey, this is Pastor Jerry, the Little Country Church, and I'm going to tell you and proclaim to you success to you and success to the kingdom of God.